In this uh, video, we'll talk about batteries or power supplies, that is, sources of electromotive force. I should say that electromotive force is not a force. It's an, a non-conservative work divided by charge, which can be related, if it happened to be conservative force, to electrical potential divided by charge. So it's a supply of energy coming from somewhere. Um, but we didn't know that back in the 1800s when people were doing this, so they tended to get a mixture of these terms because even energy wasn't really defined well until the late 1800s. So a battery is a source of electrical potential. It's a source of voltage. It is simply a power supply But unlike power supplies that you have to plug in the wall and get their energy from the power plant or something, this power supply has its own energy supply from the chemistry inside the battery. Now, when they found this idea, this, this ability to actually have this, to give you some idea of, of where these things come, there was a guy named Giovanni and who was touching, notice that if you touched a scalpel, to the leg of a wet frog, it would jump. It's as if you had given it a push, a force. But he knew it was electricity in action. Hence this idea of electric, electromotive force, right? Motion, force, electricity. But Volta, Alexander Volta, kind of got to thinking about that he didn't really believe that it had anything to do with some life force or something inside of the leg of this frog, that it had to do with the differences between the metals that was touching this frog. And that the frog was simply wet, was what was called an electrolyte to make the connection. And so he made a similar thing that could generate this electric potential, but he did it by mixing paper in different pastes between different types of plates. And by doing that, he built the first voltaic pile. Hence, he gets the name for volts named after him. There's a lot more on this on the Mechanical Universe videos that you can look at online to talk about the history. But I'll leave it there at this point. So the idea is that these things contain a voltage. Now, an ideal battery, a perfect battery, is drawn as this. There'll be some symbol, usually script E for electromotive force. Some people put B because they use the more modern term of voltage. There is a plus side that's at a higher electrical potential than the other side. Remember, only differences in voltage has meaning. So if you call this zero, and this happened to be a 100 volt battery, then that would mean that this terminal here would measure 100 volts with your voltmeter. However, if you made this 100 volts as your reference point, then that says that this place here would be 200. And when you measure between here and here, your voltmeter would measure 200 minus 100, or again, 100 volts. Only change has meaning with voltage. Now, if nothing is hooked to this circuit, then no current can flow because of this break in the wire. This is what is known as an open circuit, which I'll talk more about in the next video. So if nothing flows from here to here, then whatever this point is in potential, it's the same potential right here, because after all, this is all of an equipotential surface. So point B and point A are the same. Likewise, this point here, going all the way back, is an equipotential surface. So what you connect out here, or directly here at the battery, is the same. Now what's this box? The box represents the physical system, the black box of the battery in your car. The B and C represent the terminals that you can connect your car to. So if you haven't gone to your car, go open up your hood of your car, get your parents to let you do it, or if you own one, go open it yourself, and take a look inside. The black box that you call the battery is what's this dashed line. This, B and C, are the terminals. If you put your voltmeter across here, and if you've got nothing connected to the battery, 
then you will measure this E, this 100 volts. This is called the open circuit voltage. Now a real battery doesn't look like that. A real battery looks like the diagram shown in diagram C. It does have a voltage capability, but it also has some resistance because it's made of materials, chemicals, and various lead plates and such. And from a circuit element, although we can't see it, all of this is inside this dash line. So we can't see that. It's as if there was this perfect battery, but also this resistance. We call this the internal resistance of the battery. So just as sometimes you neglect friction in problems, but there always is really friction, sometimes people neglect this internal resistance, but it's always, always really there. Now no matter how you build a battery, in fact, no matter how you build other circuits, you can always represent them by a single battery and a single resistor in series, always, guarantee. It's called the Thevenin's um, formula, and we won't cover it in this class, but it is something that people know you can do. Now, when you do that, point B is no longer at equipotential of point A because they got a resistor between them. So the voltage that you measure out here may or may not be the same as the voltage produced by the battery. If there's no current flowing, and hence there's no voltage dropped across this resistor, if I is zero, then this voltage here will be the same as the voltage across your battery. So go to your car, with the key turned off, lift up the hood and put your voltmeter across the battery. If it's good, it should read somewhere between 11 and 13 volts. This is what's called your open circuit voltage of your battery. Then have somebody, while you keep your voltmeter hooked up, turn the switch. They don't have to turn the car on, just turn the switch to starts going ding, 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 so you've connected the battery up. When you've done that, you connect a resistor here, and current begins to flow. And when current begins to flow, some of the voltage is dropped inside the battery. You can't get it, you can't see it, it's inside the chemicals and other places. But what you'll notice is the voltage that you measure between the terminals, which are B and C, will go down. Now it should not go down much. Maybe it drops from 11 to 10. If it drops from like 11 to 6 or 11 to 4, you have a bad battery. That means that this resistance is dropping a lot of the voltage inside here. And when that happens, that means that the chemistry is messed up and the battery is bad. That's how you can tell when your battery is bad and you can't recharge it. Okay? So if you see that, this sudden drop, then that's an indication of a bad battery. If your open circuit voltage was low to start with, but when you turn on the battery it doesn't change much, that just means it needs to be charged. This is how you can test a battery for your car. So talked about most of this thing. The internal resistance is important because it needs to be much smaller than the load of the battery. This ensures that most of the energy in the battery goes to your car. Let me show you that. There's your battery. Let's say that that's 13 volts. And here's some resistance. And let's say that that's 1 ohm. And then let's connect that. So there's our battery in like this. And here's your load. And let's say your load resistor is equal to 10 ohms. So this is the voltage that you're going to measure out. This is a voltage divider circuit. So V out is equal to Vn times RL. 
over R internal plus RL. So that's 13 volts times 10 ohms over 11 ohms. And we punch that in our calculator. And we get about 11.8 volts. So the voltage goes down a little bit when the switch is connected and you lose some voltage across the 1 ohm but not much. If on the other hand let's build a different circuit you had 13 volts and let's say that this was 20 ohms of resistance inside your battery that your battery somehow has got a high resistance and then you connect your 10 ohm load then my output voltage plus minus V out would be equal to 13 volts times 10 ohms over 30 ohms so V out would be approximately 4.3 volts so we see if this resistance inside your battery gets large you get very little voltage out 4.3 volts to drive the car if this resistance is small compared to what you're hooking it up then most of the voltage goes out your car now you don't adjust this resistance this is fixed by the way your car is wired up this resistance needs to be low for the battery to be good when it gets becomes high all the voltage is dropped internally in heat and you don't get anything out that heat in the old acid battery could even cause the acid to actually evaporate boil off and because it did that occasionally a little bit we'd have to put water back in them today's seal batteries you don't do this anyway this is the basic thing about batteries and about dealing with this internal resistance in them let me give you uh, one last kind of practice uh, here's an example problem it asks you what's the voltage in this circuit when it's open the opened voltage would be 13 volts and then it says to connect this to a 12 ohm resistor so for B V would be 13 volts times 12 ohms over 13 ohms so V would be 12 volts all right that's how you work those type problems see you on another video